now it takes a little bit, but hey, we're live, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well, and that's awesome. Thriving Thursday. I'm here with Mark Johnston. He is our head marriage expert and coach here at High Thrive Coaching, and my name is Heather Cho, and I'm the mindset coach here. So, Mark, while we wait till a couple people jump on live, I know we had um, several people that said they'll be joining us today. Tell us what we're talking about today. What 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 is our our goal, our topic for this live stream for everyone today. Glad you asked. So we're actually going to be going over, you know, with it still being January and, you know, there was the New Year's, you know, the whole New Year's thing here in January. We're still on the, the topic of change. And so we're talking about how do you actually make lasting change? Because, you know, time and time again, I hear from people, okay, we tried this. We tried all these things here and nothing's working. Why didn't why didn't these changes stick? And so, you know, I really wanted to go over and like, you know, what actually creates some change? Because there are certain things that actually create lasting change in people that make it so that someone, you know, just something clicks. And from then on, people have a completely different life. So I wanted to talk about that. That's awesome. Yeah. And I can see we have a couple people watching us live. So go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you can hear us and see us okay. Drop us a comment, say, <laughs> say hi, how you're doing, where you're from. And um, if you have any questions, as always, please post them here so Mark and I can cover them. Please. So Mark, when we're talking about change, um, I'm curious to know how many people are kind of over like the whole idea of New Year's resolutions, how many people kind of just give it up or just like don't even really want to put forth the effort. And then how many people are actually like, this is a new year, this is a fresh start for me, and I really want to make it happen for me this year. So if you would, in the comments, kind of like, weigh in where you're at because I feel like there's a little bit of disenchantment sometimes even around this idea of of New Year's goals or New Year's resolutions and change in general. Wouldn't you I don't know, would you agree with that? I you know what I'll tell you what, I'm not a big um fan of New Year's resolutions. <laughs> it's just it's you know, growing up it, it never really meant much to me. I figured, you know, if there's something that needs to change do it, you know, get, get that change done. Um, but with that said, I do understand the sentiment, you know, yeah. like you said, the idea, okay, that it's now a new year and okay. And with this new year, we can have a fresh start on things. It, it's, it can be something that's really, you know, give some meaning to, to that change. And that's, you know, as we're going to talk about you know, having meaning to your changes is, is an important thing. So absolutely, I, I can see why it, it's really good for some people. It's never really stuck with me as a big part of the holiday. It's mostly been about the party. But, you know, uh, not to say that I'm against, you know, making resolutions or against change. No, I'm certainly for that. It's just not been a big thing for me. And I can understand either way. Yeah, I think one of the most beautiful things about it is it gives you the opportunity for reflection because of the linear calendar there. You kind of like, wow, we're in a new a new year, a new number. How was this last year? And do I really want it to be like that going forward? Right. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's a good time for some self-reflection and to really move yourself forward. So I'm going to post a link here on the screen. Um, and this is leading to our blog post that you can go to on highthrivecoaching.com called Four Secrets for Lasting Change in Your Marriage. So we're going to go a little bit deeper off of this post that Mark created. It's beautiful. And I really encourage you to go check it out. Um, so go ahead and go over there to the blog post and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. And if you have any questions, we will just dive right in there. So, Mark, what would you say would be... Before we jump into the specific, we're calling them secrets, but they are, they're these things that we often want to make change. We don't know how, we don't know where to start and how to make it really last. So before we kind of dive into all of that, what do you feel like is the most important thing for people to have in mind when they're looking at making changes in their relationships and their marriages? That was a broad question, but just wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of lay the groundwork before we go in really deep. You know what, that's... It sounds like a simple question. It's super complex. You know, when I was looking at uh, making this post and, you know, just in general, when I'm helping people change, you know, that, that's been like a question, like what's the one important thing that's really going to make the difference? And I, I think I'm, I'm going to give 
a vague answer here is that it's really going to be different for for everyone. Now, one of the things that I was referencing when I was making the, this post is is an excellent book. I I'm, this isn't any sort of an uh, advertisement or anything. It's just I happen to like this book. I'm not getting paid or anything for this, but there's a book called Change by Jeffrey Kotler, and he was talking about okay, what actually creates change and you know, the conclusion that I got from that book is lots of different things create change. And it's just, it kind of depends on the situation and the person and, you know, what sticks. But for me, if I had to name one thing, if you're going to nail me down here and say, okay, there's one thing that, that creates change. And I'm going to say that, that one thing is motivation is, can you find that motivation to change and can you actually hold on to that motivation and can you prolong it because what i see happen is very often especially with new year's resolutions people say oh, they, they get all this momentum going they say okay it's a new year i'm gonna you know head off and i'm going to make all these changes and then what happens is they, they hit some obstacles and they lose that momentum and then the resolution dies off you know a few weeks in and so absolutely, if, if you, like I said, if you have that motivation, then you're going to get off on a good start. If you know, if you can plan for, um, you know, keep some way to keep that motivation, keep it, you know, keep it going, you're going to really get into, you're going to actually start creating a habit and actually have a real change there. Now, one thing that you say in this blog post, I think is really interesting. I want to highlight it here. You say, now there's a secret about motivation and change that most people don't realize. You can create it artificially for yourself. So explain to us a little more what that means. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, a lot of people think, okay, I, you know, I've tried all these things. Like I was saying before, I've tried all these things and nothing works. I'm just, I can't change. And really the thing is it's, it's because they haven't been going about it the right way. It's, you know, when we're talking about motivation, it's not whether you have motivation or you don't have motivation because you can absolutely create motivation. And, you know, when I, when I say that it, it really takes some very specific work. So for instance, um, you know, I, I go into like the story at the beginning of the blog post and, this it really, you know, when I'm talking about change, it, I, I keep going back to the, the days where I used to work at this drug rehab center because, you know, that the, the place is all about making big life changes. And I, the, uh, over and over again, I'd see people, um, you know, come into these places, make some effort. And then, you know, very often it was a very sad thing. I'd see them come back, you know, months later having to deal with the, the same problems. And I, I remember, one individual there, um, you know, I, I didn't mention him in the this post. You know, I was actually talking about a failed attempt, I believe, um, when I was referencing the the drug rehab center. But I do remember one person who was explaining to me um, what they were doing differently, and I could see some change as he as he went through the, the center. I I never saw him again. He didn't come back, so I assume things worked. But he was really talking about really getting excited about meditation and you know actually some mental practices um and as i you know continued on with education and things i, I really became a huge fan of the idea of meditation and i know different people um, have different definitions of meditation so what i mean by meditation is basically the the practice of practicing holding certain thoughts and emotions and so when I'm talking about creating motivation artificially, you can take the time during the day and create the feeling of excitement and motivation. So for instance, if you want a new marriage and you feel like you can't really get up that motivation, you can take the time to remember those times when you have been motivated and to really hold on to those feelings. And to reinforce that with with thoughts saying, you know what, I, this is really important to me and this is something I re really want to work on and I'm going to keep working on this. And as long as you keep up that practice, it becomes second. Those thoughts and those feelings become second nature. And it just it becomes more easily, more naturally. And that's how you actually cre can artificially create 
whatever kind of feeling you want. If you want to be happier, you can practice happiness. And if you want to be more grateful, you can practice gratitude. If you want to feel more connection, more love, um, you can practice those feelings, you know, on your own or even with others. That's what I mean. Gotcha. So this artificial motivation, I'm actually going to say is the most genuine form of motivation that there is. What we're doing is we're changing it from looking at the outside effects, right? And the outside results, the external results in your life that maybe wouldn't be conducive to feeling happiness, to feeling gratitude. Those external situations you might be in right now in your relationship wouldn't be leading you to feel really happy or positive or motivated about your relationship. However, we know that, that if we continue to focus on the things that are already in existence, then that only perpetuates those same things because mm -hmm. those things give us a certain emotional response, which then changes our thoughts and be our behaviors. And those behaviors create these conditions that continue to perpetuate year after year sometimes. And so what you have to do is become consciously aware that, yeah, the circumstances, they might not be ideal. This relationship might not be ideal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tap in to here we go. Here we go, Mark. We were talking about this earlier with our mastermind, that soul level change. Yeah. Okay? We're yeah. just taking it from the outside and everything that we're seeing, hearing, experiencing on like a physical level to that deepest level part of us. And when you can make a change from that center of who you really are, what you really want and the potentiality that each of us really have, when you tap into that kind of place, it's not external change. We're not just talking about changing some habits or giving communication tips, although we love those. <laughs> We're talking about getting to the core of who you really are and what you really want. And when you can shift into focusing more on that space and that type of energy, then the external results change in time. They start to reflect what's going on inside. I, I just wanted to take a moment. I, I saw um, Matt comment. He's trying to find the book on Amazon. I just want to show it again, just so it's very clear. It's Change by Jeffrey A. Kotler, K-O-T-T-L-E-R. So if you're looking for that, that's that's what the book looks like. So I, I just wanted to address that. Someone asked, asked about it. Yeah, very good. Thanks, Matt, for repeating that. appreciate that. So, okay, secret method number one, Mark, we're talking about reducing stress and facing our fears. Why is this so important to create lasting change in a relationship? What are we talking about here? Well, you know, oftentimes there are things, there, there are obstacles that get in the way of the, the change that we want, right? Um, you know, we can pinpoint these obstacles to say, okay, well, maybe... Um, you know, my husband or wife is, isn't willing to to go here, or maybe they're they're feeling hurt from this or that. Um, but when we really, when, when we're dealing with our own change, you know, frequently what the obstacles are is it's fear and, and stress. And absolutely, if you want to make some change, you need to think about removing the obstacles for change, because you know. If you're, if you think about this, you know, from a mental state, you know, beyond, let's say that you're trying to lose weight. We're talking about just general, even physical changes. We're not even talking about marriage. You, you can go through the steps. You can, you can get the diet and you can do the exercise. But then if you still have that anxiety, that fear uh, surrounding whether you're going to, uh, whether you're going to succeed, how are you going to approach that, that goal? If you're fearful of, um, you know, whether you're going to succeed or not, if you're having anxiety over it, it's going to, it's going to feel unpleasant when you're actually think, you know, working on that goal. And what the result is, is you end up approaching that goal less often. You end up avoiding it because it's not feeling good. Um, so sometimes it's about pushing forward and facing those fears. Um, for instance, in marriage, you know, Absolutely, you know, a way to, to build trust, a way to build intimacy is to be open and vulnerable. And that can be really scary, but sometimes it's about facing that fear. Um, other times it's about reducing that stress or anxiety. If you have 
so much stress in your life that you're not able to have the, the mental resources to approach a situation well, it's also gonna get in the way. So absolutely, you need to reduce stress and you need to face fears if you're gonna make some change. Otherwise, you, you will, I, I guarantee it, if you don't address these things, you will, you're gonna lose that momentum, you're gonna lose the motivation to continue change. Absolutely. So with everyone watching, just do a check in with yourself. What is that fear, that hesitation there, that doubt that's really keeping you from moving forward? Is it fear of rejection? Are you afraid of putting yourself out there? Like Mark said, having that kind of vulnerability only to have your spouse reject you again. Right. That does not feel good. But is it keeping you stuck where you are? So you've got to kind of assess where you're at. What would that fear be? How is it serving you? And it is serving you in some way, usually for as a form of protection. Um, but is it going to keep you stuck if you continue to listen to that fear? Or if you overcome that fear, are you going to be able to move forward? The fear is actually not such a bad thing always. It's only bad when we stay stuck and let that become a barrier to us. If we allow fear to teach us and give us guidance on the things that we need to be aware of or the things that we might need to work on personally, it can really actually move us forward. So that's just a really, that's a powerful thing. I think fear, um, oftentimes we don't want to feel it. <laughs> so we suppress it, which then becomes anxiety and anxiety built on anxiety becomes depression to a point where we feel hopelessness. So we need to be really aware that fear is like that double-edged sword. Uh, there's a good healthy amount of fear but if we stay stuck there, then that's that's not going to get us where we want to be. So any last thoughts on that one there? Or if anyone had any questions about this, this is a really big one. Those that are able to move past their fears are the ones that succeed. And we see this all the time when we're working with our clients. And oftentimes you said it here in the post, even Mark, that some point most people are asking, what if this doesn't work? <laughs> right. Yeah. And they get stuck there. They let that truly damn them from moving forward. And so then they actually fail by default. I know that's really rough to say, but it's true. If you're letting your fear stop you, then you're already failing. Instead of trying and potentially succeeding, you're automatically giving into the fear, which is automatically failing and keeping things the way that they are. So that's one of the things that we really work on. I like what John just said, move past your fears to succeed. Thanks, John. Yep. I'm going to show that here. I'm going to highlight that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's really true. When we have our clients, one of the first things that we do is mindset work on what are your fears? What are your limiting beliefs? What's keeping you stuck? Because once we can identify exactly what that is, then there's things that you can do practices to release that fear, reduce that tension and get into a really clear state of clarity and empowerment. And it's beautiful to see people transform like that. And things start to happen very quickly on the external results again, once you get that internal place. Uh, I'll, I'll make a generalization. I, I, by far, the people, the, the clients that we work with, the most successful ones are the ones that are able to push past fears. And the ones that I, I almost 100% of the time, the ones that hold on to those fears are the ones that we don't see as much results with. It, it's an unfortunate thing. That's, that's why we focus in on that so much. Um, yeah. because we know that's an, an important component in change. Absolutely. So then that takes us to secret method number two, which is creating and maintaining meaning. Okay. So this is what we're going to the deeper meaning behind what you're actually wanting to achieve in the change in your relationship. So Mark, you had a really good story here. You want to touch on that real quick? Yeah. So it, yeah, it's a good story. Um, well, it, hard for me to say that but you know growing up I, I came from a big family um and my my next older brother i'm the seventh child of eight, eight children the next older brother uh my brother jeff he was born with uh intellectual disabilities and something somewhat sad um i i remember growing up really watching him struggle um he so wanted to be accepted by people, to be understood. And I, I just saw so many people be very dismissive of him. And it, it was really, it was difficult for me to watch that growing up. And by, by and large, I, I think this is one of the main reasons why I got into the line of work that I did, because I, I saw how much, how much he wanted to be understood and how much he wanted to be helped. 
um, and not be able to receive that. It made me really feel for that sort of situation uh, in other people. And so, you know, in, in my career, as I've been helping people, I personally, I've been really drawn to especially those people who really are struggling and feeling very misunderstood. And oftentimes I would put myself in these really, in these, on these really difficult cases, knowing that, you know, I, I would be the one that would be able to really give some patience and understanding. But the reason I tell this story is that meaning right there really came from, from the experience of growing up with my brother. The, the meaning that I need to be the one to give understanding and patience and care to, to other people um, really shaped my life. It provided a lot of change um, and, and who, you know, changed who I was. And here's the thing. This, this is, yes, this is something that I, I had to experience all growing up. But you can also take that, that same situation and apply that to any change that you want. If you can create some deep meaning to, to your goals, if you can give some deep meaning to your goals, it really drives you to, to follow through and to, to keep going on. I mean, this has become like a huge, huge part of my life because I gave it so much meaning. And so that, that's the, you know, a huge thing that you can do. Um, just find whatever you can to, to make the, the goal meaningful, to make the change meaningful. So if you're looking for a better marriage, if you're looking to save your marriage, you need to ask yourself some questions. What does that mean to you? And why, how can you make that more important? How can you make that such a driving force in your life that you're going to do whatever it takes to, you know, to make that happen? You know, how can you make that a deep core value of yours to make that change? Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. And for some people, it's again, getting to, well, for everyone, I'm going to say for everyone, <laughs> for every single one of us is getting to that soul level place about what, do I really value what matters most to me? For some people, it's going to be your children, right? And the example that you're setting for them. Um, and, and that can be a huge motivating factor. But beyond that, what does it really mean to you in this relationship? When you have that kind of internal drive. Okay, so I really like this analogy. <laughs> And I have a toddler banging on the door. So actually, I'm going to step away for just a minute. Um, right. Sorry to leave it hanging in the middle of that. But um, Mark, I'm going to actually turn it over to you for just a second. I'll tell you my analogy when I get back. Okay, we, we'll circle around back to what she's saying. Um, I was a little bit, honestly, I was a little bit distracted by the noise. But it's, that's the, the, the magic of working from a home office, right? Um, it has its blessings and its curses here. But... Yeah, I like what John said there. I, I need to be the one to give understanding and patience. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. Like I, like I said, that was a huge, uh, that gave a lot of meaning to my life. And it really shaped how I approach even marriages. Um, so, I mean, a lot of what I focus in on when I'm working with clients is that giving of understanding and patience. Because, you know, it really, that can smooth over so many problems. So I like what you said there, John. Yeah, <laughs> Matt's saying I'm just happy that it's not my door being banged on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that that happens to me at times too. Matt knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. You good, Mark? Can I? Yeah. Can I yeah, say yeah, yeah. 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 So this analogy that a light goes off on your dash in your car, and we all know what that means. That means that something isn't working. Just like in our life, we have a result gives us a signal something isn't working. Well, do we just take like a screwdriver and hit the light and make it think that everything's fixed, right? No, of course, we need to go down deep. We need to get into the engine. We need to figure out what's wrong there, right? So that's the difference between fixing a surface level problem versus the internal cause that keeps creating that problem. So that was my, just my little analogy there um, about creating the meaning that's like going into the engine and getting all tuned up right so that it's running properly instead of just thinking if you turn off the light there on the engine that everything's gonna be just fine. So, yeah, <laughs> thanks, John. Understanding and care and patience, yes, that's yes. very good. <laughs> All right, so let's go to secret method number three. 
which is change ourselves through service to others. I post that yes. one up here. Okay, go ahead. Run away with okay. that, Mark. Yeah, no, the reason why I put this down is because so many people do experience change when they, they give up themselves to other people. You know, uh, I had, I had multiple family members serve in the military. Um, you know, I've also had many family members, you know, give long-term, you know, religious service. And every one of them, uh, you know, myself included, you know, I, I volunteered a couple of years of my life to just volunteer work. Um, every one of us, you know, when we talk about those experiences, it really changed who we are. Um, and here's how that works, you know, cause I absolutely, I, when I'm talking about change, when I'm talking about what needs to happen, I like to really understand it at a deep level. So this is how I understand it. Like what, what goes on when you're giving service to others, you know, when we are giving to other people, a lot of times what we see is a very parallel experience. So we, we change and we grow and we see others struggling. Um, and we, we notice a transformation in them. And, and as we're we're seeing them, pro, you know, process things through our own work, uh, we can see, OK, hey, here's this path out of it. And, you know, frankly, I when I was going through school, I would hear this time and time again from classmates who were you know, studying psychology. And they would say, you know, I just worked with this client here and it really changed what I what I thought about, you know, my own life. It's because they would see the, the they could see these similarities in other people. and it, they could apply it to their, you know, their own circumstances. Um, in in addition, you know, just serving others, you know, be, feeling like you can be uh, a part of something bigger than yourself, even if that something bigger is your own marriage. When you can give of yourself for the greater cause, that goes back to creating some meaning. You can say, oh, you know what, I'm going to put my own needs aside for a moment and do what's needed for the health of the relationship. You, be, you contribute yourself to something bigger than yourself. And once again, we go back to the, these service experiences, you know, people being in the army, they say, you know, I'm, what's drilled into the people in, in the military? They're saying, I'm serving my country. I'm serving something bigger than myself, this bigger idea. It doesn't matter what I'm giving up myself because I'm doing something for the greater good. So whether you're serving your country, your faith, or simply your marriage, it helps create some meaning um, there. You know, other things, you know, being able to gain a new perspective. You know, when I'm working with uh, with couples, one of the big things I really hammer in it is trying to gain the perspective of your spouse. As you, you know, trying to serve them and seeing what they need. And really you, you start looking at things from a, a different point of view when you start um, gaining, you know, the perspective of someone else, you, you might see, you know, especially in a marriage, you might see just how much you've been contributing to the problem, just how much you've been contributing to the solution when you might not have no, not have noticed those, um, those details in the past. And so, you know, absolutely serving others can do a world of good for, for change. Um, and which is why, you know, uh, public schools, I mean, they try this. They, I think they don't do this well, but the, the idea is good that, you know, they encourage volunteer work um, in, in a lot of public school systems. And I can't say it in all of them, but I know at least the one I grew up in, it really encouraged the volunteer work. It's because they understand that giving of yourself does a lot for your own good. Absolutely. I do a personal self check in my own marriage, when I'm feeling unhappy about something or frustrated or angry, <laughs> yes, I do get angry. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. <laughs> um, that I, I check myself and I recognize every time I'm doing that, my focus is always on myself. It's always on, he's not meeting my needs or he didn't keep this promise or, <laughs> you know, it's always turning it back on myself. And when I shift that perspective to what is he going through, what does he need at this time? What is his experience like? And how can I help him? That's it. Like, like that's the golden ticket right there to long-term happiness in marriage. Because 
when I shift that to him, then all of a sudden my heart softens and I have compassion toward him. And as I am able to serve him and help him, it makes everything so much better. And he in turn mm -hmm. gives that back to me. It's reciprocal, but I can't be thinking about myself. I must be thinking about him and what he needs. Absolutely. Another so word. I'm going to interrupt you. So I'm, I'm going to just second what you're saying there. Now I'm going to admit I'm not always a perfect husband. And I make mistakes on occasion. And you know what? The the big thing that is so touching to me, um, you know, that my wife does is she really gives so much understanding. Um, and that, that's something that we really foster in, in my in our marriage is just really trying to understand why the other person might be struggling and where they're at and to give that support, even if those mistakes might be hurting us in some way. My wife gives that to me in spades, and, that, and that's one of the reasons why I I care for her so much. I, I love her so much. She just absolutely um, serves the marriage and serves you know you know serves it well. So absolutely, yeah. it's the healing balm in a relationship. Now I'm just going to take it just a tiny step further. Now in your marriage, one important thing to really understand is that what might be seem like service to you, your partner might not understand as service. That's one of those things that we have in a relationship. And that's one of the reasons why Mark and I go deep into meeting your spouse's emotional needs. Some people call it the five love languages. I know the love dare goes into some of this and all of it's good. But what makes it even better is when you take it a little bit deeper than even those to really understanding your unique spouse, what their unique needs are and how you can communicate that service and understanding to them instead of the way that you see it because you might think that you're doing a great job. And honestly, it just might not resonate with them based on their personality. So that's something we can go into deeper on another time, but I did want to touch on that and encourage everyone to really understand your spouse and understand what their core emotional needs are. When you meet those needs, mm, you become like irresistible. <laughs> like, your partner is like so happy to be around you. You're so happy to be around them. And that's really a, a really important factor about um, having a happy marriage. Okay. Now we're gonna go right on to secret method number four, which is big change. I <laughs> like how you, know, you titled that, Mark. Big change. So what is this kind of big change that you're talking about here? Well, it's not really so much of a um, a method, uh, but or anything. But I'm just talking about how you know change is just it's a huge topic. It's, it's not something that you know we can easily cover and you know a 30 minute live stream or a short blog article or even you know even a a, a sizable book it's a, it's really something if you're really interested in change you really have to dive into it and um it, w when you're talking about long lasting change you, you can't dabble in, in in it at all and I, so i guess if we're we're going to talk about it as a a fourth method or a fourth thing to keep in mind is you can't just be casual about change. You really have to dive in. If you need help, you need to get that help, get that support. If you need to develop new skills like personal motivation skills or personal organization skills to help you, you need to do that. But do whatever it takes. Because I, I think so many people sit around and say, you know what? change i i can't i can't change this is something that i can't do and really there are steps that you can take there's small steps that you can take now that will lead to big change in the future and by and large i think the the main issue with that gets in the way of change is people so often look at you focus in on short-term gain instead of long-term gain they say okay well it's really difficult to study and to develop these skills because you know what happens is they, they don't see the payoff right away and so it's much easier to, to go watch tv or to go and read a book or to go exercise well i mean that would be some long term but you know do these simpler things that give more immediate benefit so yeah if i had to say what's what is a big change about it is about keeping that longer perspective and really dedicating yourself 
Absolutely. One thing that's really important to understand is it took you a long time to get to where you are, most likely. And where you are is a result, a product of everything that you've thought and done in the past. And it kind of has this lag effect where things take time to show up. I'm so, going to interrupt you here. And that's problems as well as, you know, benefits. So your problems are there because of everything that's been going on in the past, just as well as the things that are good in your life. Exactly. Coming. Right. And so as we're making these changes, you have to have that long term perspective and understand it's not going to happen overnight. You know, sometimes we laugh at ourselves after we try something for two weeks and things still look the same. <laughs> Like, I'm trying, I'm making all these changes, but my life still looks exactly the same. It must not be working. And then we give up not recognizing that it's the consistency and continuing forward, the perseverance, the grit, the tenacity, staying connected to that soul level place that will change things eventually, but it's not going to happen overnight. So mm -hmm. that's really important to have that perspective as you go into it. That will keep you going and understanding we call it the law of gestation, but it's the, the trickle effect between the actions that we have and the kind of the results. Some of them are immediate, but we don't live in such an immediate, we will, we think we do, where we get immediate gratification or immediate results. Our culture's conditioned us to think that's how it is, um, but we know that long-term, the bigger picture shows us that it's quite opposite. The things we're working on now will have effect months and years to come. So it is absolutely possible. I just want to share, um, I'm going to share right here what John said. The big change, any change, is not an easy thing to accomplish. It takes a full-time investment in the improvement of the relationship. That is so true. And it's absolutely possible. One of the most gratifying things that we get to see is people making those changes. We've truly seen, like I remember um, a man who came to us who was, he's I'm needy and um, I'm insecure and I just kind of cling on to things and I always get in my own way about them because I need other people to make me feel good. And he had this whole self perception that really was affecting his relationship and his life. So the point where it was pushing people away, pushing his spouse away and he was miserable because he felt like he wasn't getting what he needed to feel good in himself. And seeing him transform from that kind of a place to letting go of the, need, the neediness, um, getting to that core level place of who he really knew he was, which was a person that was strong and empowered, a person that was centered, even like a steady rock in the midst of a storm. So working with him on that and helping him develop a new self image to the point where that was truly who he knew he was. Then we saw him start to operate from that place and things start to change on the outside results as well. And he is now in an incredible place and we're so thrilled with that. But that's just one example of so many that change is absolutely possible. It can happen and it can happen for you. You're the one that has to decide to make it happen. Yeah. So I wanted to, you know, we're, we're kind of running a little bit long today, but I really wanted to get into what we uh, something that we're offering, especially for January. Um, and getting some New Year's resolutions out of the way. Uh, we just put um, out just an offer. It probably won't stick around just because it's because it's such a good deal. <laughs> We're actually giving a lot of our, our time. At, probably won't keep this deal around, but we're we're offering um, a relationship tune-up here um, just for the next little while. We want to see how this works. And what I'm talking about here is really giving some people some really packed one-on-one -on -one attention um, just to help help you get to where you want you, you know get those goals that you've just made to improve your marriage get them going and moving um, so what what we're talking about here is four sessions very planned out very packed um, the first one that we get into is is all about like a really deep dive diagnosis where are your problems? What do you need? What do you need to move forward? And giving you a really detailed assessment of just everything that's going on in, in the relationship. Because if you don't know what needs to change, if you don't know where the problems are, it's going to be really hard to actually go in the right direction. Um, 
next, you know, the second session that we would work on is, like I said before, we are talking about fears and stress and how those get in the way of change. So session two would be really identifying what are your personal obstacles and roadblocks and what can you do to move past those, you know, developing a plan to get these obstacles out of the way for good. Um, moving on, you know, the, the next time that you and I would talk would be to really get some positive action going. So we've moved obstacles out of the way. We know what we need to do. And so what are some physical steps that you can take to make your marriage better? You know, giving you good channels of communication, creating more trust and intimacy, healing past wounds, you know, how to actually do these things and get it going. So, you know, so that you can actually feel like you're doing something and rather than just feeling like, okay, you're just thinking about doing something. And, you know, fitting with the theme of this entire stream here, um, the last um, session would be all about making long-term plans, making sure that change is permanent, change is lasting. So creating a plan for the next few weeks, for the next few months, for the next, you know, year, so that we know exactly what you need to do to make sure that you have the best marriage possible going forward. So we just wanted to put that out there, uh, offer that to you. Uh, I think Heather can put up the link for that if she would be so kind. Oh, if she already did, <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Um, but what we're doing, you know, this is um, so being able to get you exactly what you want in a marriage um, for $297. So if you're thinking about it as far as, you know, value, I mean, you, we're showing you exactly how to get from point A to point B and giving you detailed assessment, giving you exactly what you need to have a happy marriage. So we have the the uh, the link up there. I would love to talk to you about this, especially if you have any questions. I'm open to that as well. Heather, Absolutely. anything to add? Yeah. So thank you, Mark. So this might not be for everyone, but if it is, if it resonates with you, something in your core space is saying, yeah, I really would like some insight. I'd really like to get moving on forward in my marriage. I'm tired of feeling stuck. I'm tired of being in a painful rut. I want things to improve. This might be a great option for you. And the reason why we created it, it's a little bit of a mini version of our traditional <laughs> premium course. We wanted to make it a little more accessible for those yeah. who, um, wanted to get started in a little bit easier way. So this is a great opportunity for you to hit it strong and to really get those things that you're wanting, that your heart is craving and your soul is craving for you and your spouse and your family. Be the, the that example that you want um, to your children and have that happy, healthy marriage again. So with that, appreciate all of you guys. Thank you all for joining in. Thank you for your comments. And thank you, Mark, for your incredible insights on how to make change fast. A happy, healthy marriage. Right. So we appreciate you all, and we will see you next week. Bye, everyone.